The Gulf Coast is a fascinating blend of sunshine and shadows, a region where you can find stunning landscapes right alongside a pretty grim history. And maybe that's why we got so many urban legends and ghost stories floating around here. I guess when you mix that much beauty with that much tragedy, you're bound to get some serious spooky tales. These stories, often a mix of the bizarre, the horrifying, and told with a dash of dark humor, have been part of our fabric since day one. They've been whispered around campfires, shared in hushed tones in dimly lit rooms, and passed down from generation to generation, making sure they never really died. So we thought we'd gather a little collection for you. Five chilling tales, one from each Gulf Coastal state. Buckle up, because it's going to be a spooky ride. Enjoy. The picturesque coastal community of Pensacola Beach, Florida, where days drifted by as lazily as the tides, and the zenith of excitement was an occasional squabble among energetic seagulls, found itself thrust into the cosmic spotlight in 1987, courtesy of an unsuspecting local contractor named Ed Walters. So picture this, it's an unusually warm November evening, and Ed, a man whose life's essentially the human equivalent of a screensaver, is just trying to chill on his porch and drink a cold beer. But no, the universe has other plans. Suddenly, this dazzling blue beam, brighter than every lighthouse in the galaxy combined, just blasts him. Like, hey Ed, how about a little existential crisis with your evening beer? Ed, now living his own private episode of the Twilight Zone, grabs his Polaroid camera, because obviously, that's what you do when the universe sends you a personalized light show. And he starts snapping photos. These aren't just any photos, though. They're like the sci-fi equivalent of catching a unicorn having tea with Bigfoot. But wait, there's more. This blue beam wasn't a one-kind, let's mess with Ed kind of thing. It kept coming back, like a bad sequel. Each time, things got weirder. Ed started witnessing alien drop-offs like some kind of intergalactic Uber. These figures, all glowy and mysterious, would pop up and have telepathic chats with Ed. Imagine the most intense Zoom meeting of your life but with aliens speaking in some kind of space Esperanto. Ed's photos made it to the front page of the Gulf Breeze Sentinel, and boom, Pensacola Beach went from sleepy seaside town to UFO Central. Enthusiasts, skeptics, and curiosity seekers flocked to the town, turning it into a bizarre carnival of the paranormal. The local diner, which usually hosted debates about fishing spots, suddenly became the epicenter for discussions on extraterrestrial life. Believers shared their story with the zeal of people discussing their favorite reality TV shows, while skeptics were like, pics or it didn't happen, even though they were literal pics. As the nights went by, the skies above Pensacola Beach were lit up with orange and blue lights dancing around like they were in some kind of cosmic rave. The docks, usually the hangout of solitary anglers and pelicans, were now packed with sky watchers, all hoping to catch a glimpse of something out of this world. It was like the town had its very own live action sci-fi series, with Ed Walters as the bewildered main character. But the impact of Ed's story didn't stop there. Local businesses, which had relied on the usual beach tourist trade, suddenly found themselves in the middle of a UFO gold rush. Alien themed merchandise started flying off the shelves, pun totally intended, and guided tours of sighting spots became a new local industry. UFO conventions brought in people from all over, each with their own tales of the strange and unexplained. In the end, whether Ed's encounters were real or the result of a particularly vivid imagination didn't really matter. His story captured everyone's attention and stretched the boundaries of what they thought was possible. Pensacola Beach was forever changed, with people always keeping one eye on the sky, just in case. Ed Waters, with his Polaroids and wild tales, made sure that the folks in this small town would always remember those nights when the heavens seemed to open up, making the extraordinary feel just a little bit more attainable. So, picture this. You're in the heart of downtown Mobile, Alabama and you stumble upon this grand old building, the Battle House Hotel. 
It's like stepping into a time machine that's set to glamorous historic hotspot. Built way back in 1851, this place was the ultimate social hub, hosting fancy balls, dignitaries, and even a couple of U.S. presidents. But let me tell you, there's a lot more to this place than its elegant facade and rich history. Okay, here's where it gets juicy. The Battle House Hotel didn't just stand the test of time, it literally rose from the ashes. After a catastrophic fire in 1905, it was rebuilt in 1908 and quickly reclaimed its spot as Mobile's premier hotel. But, and this is a big but, during its many renovations, weird stuff started happening. Construction workers would report their tools vanishing into thin air, and entire sections of their work would just disappear overnight, like some kind of ghostly prank. Spoiler alert, this was only the beginning of the hotel's haunted legacy. Now, let's talk about one of the creepiest stories from this place, Mr. Henry Butler. Picture this, it's 1932, and Butler, a former Mardi Gras king, ends up brutally murdered in room 552. The drama? He was accused of having an affair with Mrs. Raymond Dyson, his Mardi Gras queen. Her husband and his brother lured Butler into the room and beat him to death. Seriously, it was like a crime of passion that left the community in total shock. Even though there were confessions, the Dyson brothers got off scot-free, which totally sounds like the plot twist in a horror movie, right? Now, people say Butler's restless spirit roams the fifth floor, forever seeking the justice he was denied in life. But wait, there's more. The hotel's haunted history doesn't stop there. In 1910, a young bride was abandoned by her husband shortly after their wedding. Heartbroken and alone, she hung herself from a chandelier in the crystal ballroom. Cue the eerie violin music, because her sorrowful spirit is still said to haunt this hotel. Guests and staff have reported seeing her ghostly figure and hearing her mournful cries echoing through the ballroom. Some have even spotted her in photographs taken during events, her eyes eternally searching for her lost love. Fast forward to 2007. The hotel is gearing up for its grand reopening after some major renovations. Everything's picture perfect, literally. A wedding photographer snaps a stunning shot of a bride in the rotunda. But when they review the photo later, they notice a mysterious gray suited figure standing next to her. This guy wasn't there when the picture was taken. Who is this ghostly guest? Some say it could be the husband of the bride still searching for his lost love. Others think it might be Mr. Butler making an unexpected appearance. Today, the Battle House Hotel is like a mashup of historical grandeur and supernatural intrigue. It was named the best historic hotel in the United States by the Historic Hotels of America, which is a pretty big deal. Visitors are drawn in by its stunning architecture and captivating past, but stay for the chance to encounter one of the many residential spirits. So, the next time you step into the Battle House Hotel, get ready to be transported back in time. Take in the exquisite architecture, soak up the storied past, and who knows, you might even meet one of its many ghosts. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, the haunted legacy of the Battle House Hotel is bound to leave a lasting impression on you. Happy ghost hunting. Okay, so imagine this. Off the coast of Biloxi, Mississippi, there's this place called Deer Island. It's just a quarter mile away from the shore, and it's basically a 400 acre tropical paradise. It's part of the Mississippi Coastal Preserve and home to over 10 endangered species. But what people don't often talk about is its super spooky haunted history. Legend has it that back in the day, a pirate captain, like picture the most cliche pirate you can think of, but maybe even more evil, anchored his ship at Deer Island. This guy had a chest full of gold that he wanted to hide. So he and his crew went ashore to bury it. But because this is a ghost story, he decided that the best way to protect the treasure was to murder one of his sailors and bury his body with the gold. Super chill, right? Fast forward to 1922, 
and this journalist named A.G. Ragason writes about the spooky experience of a group of fishermen who camped on the island. These guys heard weird wrestling in the bushes at night and thought, oh, it's probably just wild hogs. But the sound kept getting louder and scarier. When they finally went to check it out, they saw a skeleton rising from the bushes and it chased them. They bolted for their boat, leaving all their stuff behind and never looked back. And this isn't just one random story. Over the years, lots of people have reported similar encounters. They hear strange noises and see mysterious lights flickering through the trees. The pirate ghost is basically the island's unofficial greeter now, which is great if you're into that sort of thing. People have been visiting Deer Island for thousands of years, from ancient American Indians to French settlers in 1717, and then even up to 1905 when there was an amusement park there. But Hurricane Camille in 1969 and Katrina in 2005 wiped out all the man-made structures leaving the island wild and spooky. Despite everything, the legends of Deer Island's ghostly guardian persist. The pirate ghost, cursed to protect his buried treasure forever, is a story that's been passed down for generations. So if you're ever in Biloxi and you fancy a little adventure, Deer Island is the place to go. Just don't be surprised if you hear rustling in the bushes or see a skeleton chasing you. You know, typical island stuff. Join me, if you would, as we embark on a journey into the heart of the Honey Island Swamp, which is basically the Louisiana version of Jumanji. This place is a wild, untamed expanse filled with alligators, cottonmouths, and garfish. Like someone took a bayou and said, what if we made it extra dangerous? So picture this, a swamp that stretches over 20 miles long and nearly 7 miles across. It's massive and it's mysterious, and within its murky depths looks a legend. Something locals call the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Now if you're thinking, oh great, another Bigfoot story? Hold on to your airboats because this one's got a spicy Cajun twist. Our monster is seven feet tall, covered in matted gray hair, and has fiery red eyes. Imagine if a swamp had a bad hair day and an even worse attitude. Locals have been talking about this creature since the early 1960s, describing it with a stench that could make a skunk blush. But wait, there's more. This tale isn't just about some random monster. It's woven into Cajun and Native American folklore. We're talking about the Latichi, a human-like being raised by alligators after being abandoned in the swamp. Yeah, it's like the Jungle Book, but instead of wolves, it's gators. And instead of seeing animals, it's more about respect for nature and tribal values. Flash forward to 1963. Enter Harlan Ford and Billy Mills, our unwitting heroes. They're flying over this uninhabited swamp in a small plane when they spot something weird. A campsite in the middle of nowhere. So naturally they decide to check it out. And what do they find? Not just a campsite, but a large, hairy, ape-like creature that emerges from the bush. Looks them dead in the eyes and then just vanishes in the swamp. You know, casual. Fast forward again to 1974. Ford and Mills are hunting in the same area when they come across a gruesome scene. Dead feral hogs with their throats ripped out. And wouldn't you know it? the same kind of human-like footprints they saw a decade earlier. They call in the Louisiana Wildlife and Fishery Officers who take plaster castings of the footprints. The experts at LSU are like, yep, whatever made these is seven feet tall and weighs between 300 to 350 pounds. So basically the size of a linebacker, but hairier and smellier if that's possible. Now you might be thinking, sure, but these guys could just be making it up. But here's the thing, Harlan Ford and Billy Mills are local legends in their own right. Known for being super credible and not the kind of guys to make up stories. They work for the FAA, where lying or being unstable could cost you your job. Then there's Ted Williams. This guy not only claimed to have seen the monsters multiple times, but he believed there were several of them. He even said, I could have taken them down, but I held back because they never seemed to pose a threat to me. Talk about confidence. But plot twist, Ted Williams goes missing one day after setting trot lines in the swamp. Spooky, right? 
And if you think that's the end, think again. We got more spine chilling encounters like mysterious claw marks 10 feet up on a hunter's camp stilts, hair samples that don't match any known species, and sightings of a six foot tall naked hairy man during squirrel hunts. There are even reports of feral hogs placed high in tree forks like some kind of twisted scarecrow setup. As the story spreads, more people come forward with their own sightings, and the legend of the Honey Island Swamp Monster grows. Some say it's folklore, but the consistency in eyewitness testimonies keeps the mystery alive. So here we are, navigating the uncharted waters of the Honey Island Swamp, where the line between myth and reality blur. Whether the Honey Island Swamp Monster is a real cryptid or just a really elaborate campfire story, its legend urges us to keep exploring and questioning the unknown. And who knows, maybe one day we'll catch a glimpse of the extraordinary lurking in this untouched wilderness. Alright, get ready, because we're diving into the spooktastic, drama-filled world of Bailey's Prairie, Texas. Picture it, a chunk of land near Angleton, practically dripping in ghostly vibes and legendary tales. At the heart of it all, James Britton Bailey, a man so notorious and stubborn, they named the place after him. Bailey was born in 1779 in North Carolina, which is basically the 18th century equivalent of being a rock star from a tiny town. He had this whole bad boy vibe going for him. Marion Young, check. Six kids, check. Wife dies, he marries her sister and pops out five more kids. Clearly, this guy was a handful. His whole life was basically a non-stop episode of troublemakers of history, complete with brawls, controversies, and a knack for getting on every authority's last nerve. Fast forward to Bailey making his grand entrance into Brazoria County, Texas. This guy didn't just arrive, he clashed, like real world drama with Stephen F. Austin, the dude who's the founding father of Texas. Austin was like, nah, you can't have this land, but Bailey was all, watch me. He planted his feet literally and figuratively on Bailey's Prairie until he kicked the bucket from cholera in 1832. And because he couldn't just die like a normal person, his will demanded he be buried standing up, facing west, with his rifle and a jug of whiskey. Oh, and the men tasked with his burial stole the whiskey, because of course they did. Cue the legend. Bailey's ghost is supposedly doomed to wander Brazoria County forever searching for his stolen jug of whiskey. Enter Bailey's light, a mysterious bouncing white light that folks swear they've seen floating about four to six feet off the ground, mostly between West Columbia and Angleton. Spooky, right? The first documented sighting, a group of farmers saw this weird glowing orb moving across the prairie one night. They thought it was a lantern until it vanished into thin air. Word spread, and soon everyone had a story about Bailey's light. Like this one young couple driving along the highway who saw the light coming straight at them. They freaked out and sped away, but the light chased them for miles before disappearing. They were so scared they probably never drove that road at night again. Stories about Bailey's light are everywhere. People say it chases cars hovers near the ground, and generally makes everyone feel like they're just one heartbeat away from a horror movie. Some say Bailey's ghost is looking for his whiskey. Others believe he's out for revenge. Their stories get more elaborate with each retelling, campfire tales that become local folklore. And then there's the family who moved into a house near Bailey's Prairie. They had all the classic haunted house experiences. Cold spots, objects moving, feeling watched, the teenage daughter even woke up to see a ghostly figure at the foot of her bed. They moved out the next day. I mean, wouldn't you? Despite the chills, some locals lean into the legend. Ghost tours, storytelling events, you name it. People flock to Bazoria County hoping for a glimpse of Bailey's light. Sometimes they leave disappointed, but often they leave with their own creepy stories, adding more layers to the legend. James Britton Bailey's life was all about defiance and drama, so it's no surprise his afterlife is just as eventful. 
whether he's still searching for his whiskey or just too stubborn to rest, Bailey's ghost is a permanent fixture in Texas folklore, haunting the land and the imaginations of everyone who hears his story. I want you to like, share, comment, and follow Gulf Coastal Connections. And thank you for watching.